in the book of Galatians, chapter 1, 1, Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Who is writing? We should ask ourselves, who is writing? Okay, it's very easy. The Apostle Paul. So, is this message to me as a member of the body of Christ? Yes. Praise God. So, I can go and read and learn the sound doctrine that Lord Jesus Christ gave to Paul. Paul, an apostle, in brackets, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. All right? So he is specifying here, make clear that he is not an apostle because he made himself an apostle. He didn't go to Bible school with Peter, John, and James, or somebody laid hands on him and said, Oh, brother, now you are an apostle of the Lord. No, 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 no. In the book of Acts, you can read it for yourself. Solo Tarsus, the enemy of the little flock, the enemy of Jesus and his uh, group, you know, his disciples, led by Peter, James, and John. Solo Tarsus meet in a glorious meeting, a glorious appearing from heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ, you can read, and from that moment on, the life of this man is changed, and you'll see how God makes of him the apostle, preacher, and teacher of the Gentiles, and gives to him the revelation of the mystery. That's why we got 13 letters, Romans to Philemon, and studying the word, the truth, rightly divided, we identify our apostle, Paul, the message, the gospel of grace, the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians 3, and how you and me get saved by believing this glorious gospel. In fact, there is a reference here, not a man needed by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, because... The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is so important, as much as important is death for our sins, that's so essential, okay, because he dies for our sins, all of them, and his burial, most important at this point becomes the resurrection. Why? Because if he is not resurrected, you and I cannot be justified. We are still in our sins. But praise God, he has been risen from the dead, as Romans 4, chapter 4, verse 25 said that Jesus he was delivered for our offenses, okay? All of them, and was raised again for our justification. In other words, once we believe and receive by faith this glorious gospel, the grace of God, we are saved, sealed, we are justified, we are made complete in Christ. Praise God. This is introduction. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. It's important for us to understand when you, you find this word church in the books of Paul, Romans to Philemon, it's not referring to buildings, denominational banners, you know. It's referring to the people who have believed this glorious gospel. The church now is not the, the little flock of Israel. The church is the body of Christ, okay? The new creature, okay? It's, you can read very well, for example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go on. Verse 3. The salutation of Paul, which is in every letter, and it is so important because we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. And he salutes, it says, grace be to you. No war, curses, you know, but grace be to you. And peace as a consequence of the grace, justified by grace, Romans 5, 1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that wonderful? The Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is inspiring the Apostle Paul, telling us, writing down, that God is saluting us, greeting us, accepting us with grace and peace. And this grace and peace comes from God, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, the Father, from God the Holy Ghost, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Godhead, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is all for us, is all to save us. And that's why we receive grace and peace, because we are in the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians 3. Let's go verse 4. The Lord Jesus Christ is the last to be named in this verse 3. Who, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave himself for our sins. This is very important. Nobody killed Jesus. You know, people say, oh, the Jews killed Jesus. Well, 
materially, physically, the Romans, the Jews, you know, they condemned, they nailed him to the cross. But in reality, no one could take the life of Christ. He gave it. So he gave himself for our sins. That's why it's ridiculous and quite offensive that I gave my life to Christ. You cannot give your life to Christ. Christ gave himself, gave his life for you. And once you believe, you receive the benefit, which is eternal salvation. Of course, at that point, you belong to the Lord. Even if you don't say, if you, you don't need to say, I gave my life. You belong to the Lord. You can be an ambassador for grace, an ambassador for Christ, just by studying, reading, and preaching this word of truth. So, who gave himself for our sins? That he, the Lord Jesus Christ, might deliver us, the believers, from this present evil world, which is different is from the prayer of, you know, our Father, you know, deliver us from evil, you know. We already been delivered, but now we're going to be delivered from this present evil world. My dear friends, let's stop one second and consider. This has been written 2,000 years ago, all right? Or whatever amount of time, a long time ago, it was a present evil world. Then nothing had changed. Don't be fooled, okay? Nothing has changed. <clears throat> the world has not become <clears throat> a better place, and you man mankind better, you know? No. Present evil world. That he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. And this is very, very good news. It's the will of God that we are delivered from this present evil world. You know who's the God with a small g? of this present evil world satan is the devil is running the course of this world the prince of the power of the air you know and he's deceiving everybody and everything you know it's confusing he's keeping people blind to this glorious gospel of grace he will give you another gospel but we'll see now we'll see now so i'll just read again who gave himself for our sins and might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of god and our father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I just love this. It's very clear. It's very important. I want you to understand. I need to understand this all the time. You know, that all the glory of this great salvation goes to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, to the Holy Ghost, to the God that. Why? Because that's the operation of God. God has done something that you and I could never do, or anything or anyone else could do. He has saved us eternally. He has granted us eternal salvation in heavenly places. He has saved us and sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise by the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ. That's how God saves us. This is the final solution. All that is required of you and me and anyone is to believe and receive by faith. That's why God gets all the glory. It's not a question I'm going to go there to God and say, Hey, I'm here, man, because look at me. I pray, I fasted, I gave money, I interpreted the uh, tongues, I gave prophecies, uh, I raised the dead. No way. Besides the fact they haven't done these things. Eh? Even if we did something, that's not what God wants from you and me and us. He wants us to believe what he has accomplished. So put in your mind, God has accomplished all that was necessary for the eternal salvation of your never dying soul by the death and the burial and the resurrection of our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. But now something happens. The Apostle Paul is writing to this. Galatians says, I marvel, which means I'm surprised that you are so soon removed from me that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. So it's happening. <laughs> then it's happening now. People are removed from Paul. They go to Peter, he goes to James, John, the law, to Moses, even to the red, the red letters, to Jesus according to the red letters, which, I mean, praise God, is our Lord in his earthly ministry, but it's to Israel. He said very clearly, you go and read it for yourself in Matthew 15, 24, I've been sent, but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is not you, not me, not us. Then, the little flock, when Christ commissioned his 12, you know, the 17, the 12, 
to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of the cross, not the gospel of grace of God, he forbade them to go to the Gentiles. He said, go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans, but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You say, why? Because his earthly ministry was and is to Israel, to his people. They had to be born again because they were already the son of God. But you know, remember the, the story, the parable of the prodigal son? He's just gone away from God. God wants to come back to be born again. A water and spirit to see the kingdom, to enter the kingdom that Jesus was going to inaugurate as the Messiah King. The Messiah King and the prophet of Israel, they rejected him to the point of crucifixion. And Israel has fallen. Yeah, you know, except this little flock, Israel has fallen and is blind, is unsafe. Through their fall, salvation has come to Israel. And the Lord called and commissioned Paul with this gospel of the grace of God. And they are leaving Paul then and even now. The majority of churches, either they mix doctrine, they mix law and grace, they mix Peter, James and, and, and John with Paul. But they also mix Christ according to the earthly ministry, Christ according to the heavenly ministry, the letters of Paul. It's a confusion beyond belief. But you and I can break through free from this, studying the letters of Paul, studying the word of truth rightly divided. And going back to Paul, he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that calls you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. But then he says, which is not another. Why? Because there is no other gospel that can save you. It's the gospel of Christ. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. How can you pervert the gospel of Christ? By adding works or subtracting some element. You don't believe in the resurrection. You are not saved. You don't believe that Christ was buried. How in the world could be risen from the dead if he was, if he was not dead, not, re, not, not buried? And so forth. Don't touch this glorious gospel. Believe as it is. He died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And don't add your works, your prayers, your fastings, your confession of sins. You going to church every Sunday. You paint tithes. You walk in the straight and narrow. Because God is not pleased in your works or my works, which are works of the flesh. Even when they look good, they're not good because they done by people that are sinners it's like you know we are polluted and we produce pollution and god is not interested in that but god is ready to give us the free gift of salvation on the basis of what christ has accomplished by his death better resurrection and you believing it and you believe it's, it's not the work you know for you to believe this gospel is not the work and now paul specifies something very important that should help us if we pay attention but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed so he's referring to the possibility that apostles so you know you got 12 apostles of the kingdom preach you another gospel or even an angel from heaven. And you know, in the book of Revelation, there is an angel from heaven that is going to announce a loud flying, you know, with a very strong voice, loud voice, the gospel of fear God and observe his commandments. And so that's not our gospel. You understand? Any other gospel would be, oh, you know, show God how contrite, how sorry you are for your sins by doing penance by praying you know the beads by praying to mary by lighting up candles by confessing jesus with your mouth believing in your heart confessing with your mouth which is to israel by going to church and pay tithes and offering which is not something that it, we we not under the law by i don't know whatever doing pilgrimage you know like the the, the, the roman catholic uh, Whatever, you know, they do all this pilgrimage, you know, to Loreto, to, to Lourdes, to uh, San Juan de Campasar. God is not interested in that. But I fasted three days and three nights. Who cares? Maybe you did to lose weight. Good. If it's good for you, do it. But it's not in, God is not impressed with anything we say or do. God is very pleased with what Christ has accomplished. 
So it's very good, it's very important that you stay in the beloved. And you can stay in the beloved once you believe this gospel because God, the Father, and the Holy Ghost, He puts you in Christ, the beloved, the moment you believe what Christ has done. So Paul says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let it be a curse. Now, that's terrible. If anyone is not preaching the gospel that Paul preaches, Sticking to that and that's it, that anyone, man or woman, young or old, pastor, bishop, elder, pope, uh, cardinal, monsignor, whatever it is, is a curse, which means under the curse. It's cursed, okay? Now, that's not nice, is it? And he repeats, just in case we miss it, the Holy Ghost wants to really nail this concept. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man, now I say, we the apostles, or an angel, but now any man. So this goes through time. You know, some people believe Calvin, other people believe Arminius, other people believe Augustinus, other people believe San Tomaso d'Aquina, and uh, Santa Rita de Cascia, St. Francis of Assisi. Please stop. Simply trust what Christ has accomplished and trust and believe the apostle and preacher and teacher of the Gentiles are appointed by the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, who is Paul. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed again. Now, I want to stop here because the emphasis was in the fact that it's important, it's so essential for the eternal salvation of our soul that instead of believing men, don't even believe me, read this Bible for yourself and come and believe what Christ has accomplished. Because once you believe, God knows, you know. If you believe, if you really believe, God knows. And once you believe, and God knows that you believe, and you really mean it, you're not playing, you know. Look what happens, which is absolutely wonderful and glorious. In whom ye also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You see, once you believe that Christ died for our sins, so for your sins, my sins, the sins of everybody. So you believe it. You don't go there debating, discuss. They believe it. You say, yes, in your heart, I believe it. And then he was buried. He really died. You know, he didn't faint. He didn't pretend. He really died. And then he was buried. You know, he was buried in the, in the tomb of Joseph and and so forth, according to the prophecies, you know. And on the third day, he rose again, according to... To the scriptures means it is true. You can read in the Gospels. You know, in the four Gospels, at the end, Jesus Christ died. So whatever is written before is under the law, is Old Testament. But from the moment of the death, burial, resurrection, something new happens. And this something new needs to be explained, preached, and taught by the Apostle Paul. And once you believe it, you are saved and sealed for eternity. So don't go around with these people say, oh, you can lose salvation. You cannot lose something which is a gift of God, even once you received it, if later you change your mind because you are undergoing or whatever, you're saved and sealed. God is so wise. God is so provident. He's so prudent. He's so The wisdom of God, it, it, it's, it's absolutely astounding. The depth of uh, the riches of His mercy, of His wisdom, of His intelligence, of His grace. Put your trust in the gospel of Christ. The only Paul preaches. Be saved and sealed to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Grace, peace to all. Amen.